Hi everyone. Today, we're going to walk through how to perform supervised classification in Google Earth Engine using a decision tree classifier called Smilecart. Let's dive right into the code and see how we can classify land cover using Sentinel-2 imagery. Before we start working with imagery, we need to define our region of interest, or ROI. I'll show you how to do that by drawing a rectangle directly on the map interface. Simply click the Draw a Rectangle Geometry tool, and draw over your desired area. By drawing or defining this rectangle, we focus our analysis on a specific area, ensuring efficient processing and relevant results. First, we start by loading Sentinel-2 surface reflectance data. Here's the code, this snippet loads Sentinel-2 data, filters it to our region of interest, and narrows it down to images from 2024 with less than 10% cloud cover. The median function reduces noise by combining all images into a single, representative image. Next, let's clip the image to our region of interest. This step ensures we only work with data within our defined area. Now, let's visualize the image on the map. We centered the map to our region of interest. Here, we're displaying a true color composite using the red, green, and blue bands. This helps us visually confirm our image is correct. Now let's run the code to load the image to the map and check how it looks. The Sentinel composite image is pretty clear, we can work with it easily. Next, we need to collect training data. We will collect training data for four classes, water, land, built-up areas, and vegetation. Each class is represented as a set of points, here's where your expertise comes into play. First, we will collect training data for water bodies. For that click on Add a Marker, then New Layer and click on Edit Layer Properties. Then rename this layer as Water. From Import as drop-down select Feature Collection. Add a property. We will use land cover as the property name and for the water samples the value will be zero. Click on OK. Now we are ready to take samples from water. Let's take samples from water body. When collecting water samples, zoom in on rivers, lakes, or other water bodies. Avoid areas near the edges to reduce mixing with other classes. Now we will collect samples for land area. Choose land cover as the property name and value 1 for land. Let's take samples for land area on the map. For land, Focus on open fields or bare soil. Make sure to avoid areas that are too close to vegetation or built-up zones. Now it's time to take samples for built-up area. Choose land cover as the property name as before and value 2 for built-up area. Let's start taking samples for urban built-up areas.
while selecting built-up areas, pick distinct structures like buildings or roads. Urban areas often have mixed classes, so inspect the satellite image closely. Finally we are going to take samples for vegetation. The value for the land cover property should be 3 for vegetation. Let's click on OK and start taking samples for vegetation coverage. For vegetation, choose dense green areas like forests, grasslands, or agricultural fields. Steer clear of areas near water or land boundaries. Once we've collected the points, we merge them into a single dataset. These points represent the different land cover types we want to classify. To verify, let's display the training points on the map. Make sure your training points are spread out and representative of each class. Next, we sample pixel values from the Sentinel-2 image at the locations of our training points. This prepares the data for training our classifier. Now, let's train it. We're using a decision tree classifier called SmileCart. It's simple yet effective for this task. With our trained model, we classify the image. Each pixel is now assigned a land cover class based on the training data. Let's make our map more informative by adding a legend. The legend shows which colors represent each land cover type. Finally, let's add the classified image to the map. Now we can see our land cover classification with clear distinctions between water, land, built-up areas, and vegetation. Before we wrap up, here are some quick tips for selecting training data. Select diverse and representative points for each class. Avoid mixing classes, especially near boundaries. Use high-resolution imagery or field data for accurate labeling. Balance the number of points for all classes to avoid bias. Always double-check your training points on the map. And that's it. We've successfully performed supervised classification in Google Earth Engine. This method is a powerful way to analyze land cover and make informed decisions. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more tutorials. See you next time.